but you also have trouble setting up third person character movement animations and all that stuff once you have already a first person project because i've had trouble like 50 million times and just the other day i was thinking man i wish i had something to start with where i didn't have to do barely anything and we already have third person fortunately in this video i'm going to show you how to do just that in probably under 10 minutes and so yeah let's just get started this right here is what the final result is going to look like i'm not going to do anything super fancy but i am going to show you how to set up every single first person animation that you might have in your project to kind of work in third person even if they're not made for it like these ones are totally not made for it but even the procedural stuff it works in third person so yeah let's just immediately hop right into it okay so first of all if you don't want to watch any part of this video because you think it's going to be really annoying, really tedious, and even if it's really short, you think, hey, I might as well just grab the files. Go to the description. You have the finished files for this project. Just download them. They're free. So just go ahead and do that. If you don't want to watch the video, you can just stop it right now and go do that. If you do want to watch the video and learn how to do this, then let's just jump right into that. First of all, first step here. Most important thing. You're going to need to set up a third person character inside your blueprint, your character blueprint. Usually it's this guy, the mesh that already comes with it. For that, you just set a mannequin, move it down 90, and then add a animation blueprint. Usually comes with the started content. All you need to do is assign it. I think the default one is always called ABP Manny, so just assign that and you're set pretty much. Next step, I added a spring arm component on top of the camera. This is very important. We're going to use the spring arm. If you don't know what a spring arm is, check the documentation. <laughs> I'll leave the documentation link below, but check that. Next thing after that, here's what we're going to do. Usually, depending on how your character is set up, you're going to have something rotating left and right and something rotating up and down. For this character in the template, it's the capsule that rotates left and right. And that happens because of a property here that's called use control the rotation yaw. Yaw is just left and right. Just ignore everything else. And you're going to have something rotating up and down. In my case, the thing rotating up and down is this pivot here. That's great. You just have to know. So what I'm going to do, now that we have the camera under a spring arm, is first of all, I'm going to set up an input action for this whole thing. I made an input action called third person. There's absolutely nothing in here. If you want to create the input action, just right click, input, input actions. Pretty easy. Other than the input action, you're going to go to your input mapping context and inside the context, you're going to add the input action and assign some sort of key, nothing else, no other button to press. Then inside of your character blueprint, what I did here is I added a graph. You don't need to add a graph. I just added a graph for organization. And then inside the graph, I added this third person input action that we just made right here. Right after it, I added do once. All this does is it ensures that you tap once and you can't hold so you can check with the, a print string if that's working. In my case, if I tap right here, if I press play, tap, 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 tap. If I hold, it doesn't do anything. That's what you want. Or I mean, at least that's what I wanted. So if you don't want that, then you can change it there. The reset right here is to ensure that you can repress it again and it works fine. After that, I made a variable, third person. All I did is swap it around, not third person. Every time you, you press this, it toggles. The first thing I do after that is simply hide the mesh. Mesh here is the third person mesh. I hide it if you're not in third person and I show it if you are. I'm using set owner no see because this thing just ensures that the character or the owner, you, the player, are not going to see it. Everything else doesn't change. Right after that, I reparent that spring, spring arm that I was talking about. And this spring arm, I parent it depending on whether you're in third person. If you are, I parent it to this pivot, which as I was telling you, in this specific instance the pivot is being rotated up and down on the pitch and so the camera movement up and down is happening from here so if we parent to this we're going to get that rotation which is great that's what we want and then if you're not in third person i parent it back to the head socket of the arms this just ensures that we get the camera animation from the animations that we have in the project that's it after that there's just two little simple settings here target arm length and socket offset these two just move the spring arm if you look here, you can actually see if I reset this for a second so we can see it. This socket offset thing simply moves the camera at the end. 
that's all it does. And then the other setting, target arm length, it just ensures, it just basically makes the camera go further or closer. And so in first person, you want to set that to zero. In third person, you want to set it to a different number. And here I'm setting it to 300 and zero. And then the other thing I'm setting to 100. They're hard coded, but you can change these easily. Just make a variable. For third person, set owner no see. Right here for the arms. Again, for this one, we're doing the opposite thing. Hide the arms if you're in third person. Show the arms if you're not. And then the last thing, this just parents the equipped weapon to the character arms or to the third person character. And I'm parenting it to different sockets, and I'll explain in a second. But for the first person one, I'm parenting to IK handgun. And for third person, I'm parenting to this IK handgun R virtual bone, which if we look right here, I'll explain in really quickly what this is. So if we go right here, you can see that if we scroll down to the clavicle R, inside there, inside of hand R, I added a virtual bone, IK handgun R. I added this by right clicking on hand R going add virtual bone and then scrolling down and clicking on IK handgun and then I renamed it. That's it. What this does is it takes the animation from the IK handgun and it places it under the right hand. That's going to be really useful for what we're going to do next because we're going to layer first person animations on top of third person and the third person animations use the spine. If you move the spine and you don't move the IK handgun and you have the gun parented to the IK handgun, then it's going to look completely off and it's going to be floating. So that's why we're doing this. That's the entire character blueprint. Next thing, we already have a animation blueprint set up. We have an animation blueprint set up for first person. In my case, the animation blueprint for first person does a bunch of stuff. We covered this in a tutorial, but in any case, right here, it has like procedural jumping and procedural lowering and a bunch of stuff that we're not going to talk about right now. And so what I thought is, hey, all right, since we already had the setup to transition from first person to third person, let's layer these first person animations over so we can actually get a bit of a better result. I didn't do that in the animation blueprint though, because I don't think doing it in the animation blueprint is gonna be very helpful. So what I did is I set it up in a post-process animation blueprint. If you don't know what a post-process animation blueprint is, it's simply an animation blueprint that applies over your animation blueprint that it's already applying for a specific skeletal mesh. Here's what it looks like. I set up right here, art, mannequins, animations, ABP, TP post-process. It's a normal animation blueprint that I set up. The only thing I did after is I clicked on the skeletal mesh. I found the skeletal mesh for the mannequin. So Manny simple in this case, this looks horrible. Ignore it for now. And right here, I scroll down and in post-process anim blueprint, I just assigned this animation blueprint that I, that I set up. As you can see, you can assign any animation blueprint. I assigned this one specifically. Inside of this animation blueprint is where everything happens pretty much. I added an input pose which really just takes the animation blueprint that I was talking about before, the base third person animation blueprint, and it kind of plugs it into this post process so we can post process over that and not overwrite it. And then over that, I'm just layer blend for boning. Sounds weird. Uh, the point is I'm layering the a copy pose from mesh from the first person mesh. What this does is it simply takes whatever the final pose is from this mesh, which I am assigning to the first person mesh in the character. You can look at the files. It's basically just getting the mesh. That's it. Nothing fancy. And I'm layering spine five and IK hand root. Both of those things, I'm layering them over the third person animation. And then this right here corrects a little bit the clavicles because if we don't do this, it's gonna look really odd and they're gonna be completely kind of offbeat, at least with these animations. Last thing, I'm simply assigning I'm, I'm making sure that I IK the left hand over to wherever the uh, virtual bone for the left hand is. And what this does is it really just ensures that the left hand is slapped on the weapon like it should be. This virtual bone is also under that gun vir virtual bone that I was showing you before, and it works exactly the same way. And if you do every single step right there, and it's not a lot of them, I promise. And even if you thought it was a lot of them, you can just go to the description and download the template. You're going to get this result. This entire thing, only first person animations and the base movement animations. That's all we did. And you get a working setup for third person. Again, it's not the fanciest and there's a ton of things that you could improve, but that's what you get. And so, you know, hey, you got a third person setup. So, you know, if it helped, let me know in the description. If it didn't, 
not in the description probably in the comments uh anyway if not let me know as well and yeah give me suggestions for the next video i'll see you in the next one also make sure to download the files if you want to honestly if you don't want to watch the videos just download the files at least i mean they're free so hey there you go otherwise hey video is pretty cool so i'll see you in the next one peace